going over how you install the uh, OpenShift container platform from Red Hat on Google Cloud Platform using our IPI method. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go over the prerequisites that you saw at the beginning of the video. I'm not going to show you how to do them, but I will post all of the relevant links and uh, information in the, the comments of the video. So the first prerequisite is to access the uh, Google Cloud Platform account. And so in order to create an account, you follow the link at the description of the video. You also need to create a GCP project uh, created in the console, and I will post a guide on how to create a project in GCP. For Google Cloud Platform, you also need to have the relevant API services enabled. That is including the Compute Engine API, Google Cloud API, Cloud Resource Manager API, Google DNS API, the IAM Service Account Credentials API, the IAM API, Service Management API, Service Usage API, Google Cloud Storage JSON API, and the Cloud Storage API. And again, all of those links will be posted in the bottom and the prerequisites were shown at the beginning of the video. You also need a registered domain within the Google domain system. Or if you would prefer, you can use a separate domain and delegate third-party namespaces uh, to your Google account. Once you have a domain registered with Google or third party, you need to make sure you set up a DNS zone within GCP. Uh, one key thing to note is that the current guide calls out that the GCP project quotas uh, are acceptable. Uh, this is not the case. Currently, the persistent storage quota was reduced and needs to be increased to at least 800 gigabytes for the region that you are using. Uh, the regional compute CPUs are technically okay, but the general gist is that the regional CPU quota is for 25 and the installer uses 24. So if you would prefer to increase it, it might be beneficial to increase that. If you don't increase these quotas, you will receive an error during the installer that you have run out of persistent SSD storage. The last couple of prerequisites is to download the OpenShift installer from try.openshift.com for the appropriate operating system. It's currently only supported on Mac OS and Linux. Be sure to also download the OpenShift command line interface tools for your operating system, which will allow you to perform day one and day two operations to your console from your command line. And also you need to have a saved copy of your pull secret that you can find on try.openshift.com for installing Google uh, installing OpenShift on GCP with the IPI method. So now we're going to go over how to install OpenShift. So if you open up a uh, command line terminal and navigate to a blank directory that you want this information to be saved in, when you run the installer, it does create a bunch of local files to help uh, manage the install. You can specify a directory during the install, or you can navigate to a directory that is empty. So as you can see here, I've navigated to directory. I have the GCP install directory. I list out there's nothing in it. We're going to run the command OpenShift install create cluster. The first step is to specify an SSH key. Now, this is not required, but it is considered a best practice to specify an SSH key. So that way, if there is an error during install, you can uh, SSH into the specific instances. So we're going to go ahead and use the one that I've created. We're going to navigate down to the GCP platform. The project ID uh, is something that you specify when you initially run this installer. Uh, so when you run the installer for the first time, it will ask you for your Google Cloud Platform credentials, and it will store them in a, uh, a .gcp file. So I'm going to just show you where that is now. As you can see, I'm in my home directory. If I cd to .gcp, you can see that that's a hidden directory. If I list out, I have the OS service account.json file. This file contains all of my specific GCP credential information. And so that's where... Uh, you can see it's getting this project ID from. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter as this is the project that I want to use. For the region, you do want to make sure you specify the region that you've requested the increase uh, in persistent storage, otherwise the installer will fail. For me, that is going to be US East 1. The base domain, again, this will be populated once you've successfully credentialed your GCP account information from 
the command line. So if I select the DNS or the domain that I have, cluster name is uh, going to be what you use to describe your cluster. So if I do ECP install, and then the pull secret. Again, this you can get from try.openshift.com. And so I'm going to go ahead and just grab mine. You can store it into a file and specify the file here, or you can copy the pull secret and paste it into the installer. And so that's what I'm going to do. And as you can see, now it's beginning to create the infrastructure resources, so the installer is running. This usually takes about 30 to 45 minutes for the entire installer to complete. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here, and I will come back at the end of the install just to go over some credential information that you get once you run the install, as well as go over how to destroy the cluster. Great. Installer finished. Um, there's a couple things I want to touch on real quick at the end of the install. Um, your screen might look a little bit different than mine. I uh, am running this locally on a laptop, so there are some issues that you can run into when running it locally. And so I can touch on um, what those troubleshooting steps are for that. Uh, if you want to see what it would look like when you finish running uh, normally, you can go and view any of my other vi uh, videos. Uh, Azure or AWS or IBM Cloud, and that will um, display that. So like I mentioned, I had some issues running my installer. Uh, the cluster takes too long to update from the current version that I was running it on, so the installer would time out. But an easy workaround for that is to wait for the uh, cluster to finish initializing, and then you can try logging into the OpenShift console from a terminal or a command line. Um, if that is successful, there's an easy way to go and figure out exactly where the um, cube admin password is, and I can show you that right now. So wherever you run your directory, so if you have something called, so for example, in mine I had install directory or uh, GCP install, any of those things, um, the easiest way to figure out cube admin is to just list out in the install directory navigate to the auth folder and then from there you can see there are two files in here there's a cube config and then the cube admin password cube admin password is a text file with the cube admin password cube admin is the account that is created at the beginning or uh, directly after the installation of the cluster so as you can see here i did have to run a new command um, i navigated to my new installer uh, specified the directory which again is install dear and I ran the command wait for or wait hyphen for install hyphen complete. Once that runs, uh, as my install was complete, it does output the same information that you'll see. So as you can see, it was waiting for the cluster to initialize. This URL here is what you would use to access uh, OpenShift from the command line interface using the OC toolset. Then there is the uh, console URL which is right here. And as you can see, I'm logged into that in the back. Um, this URL is what you would use to access OpenShift from a web browser utilizing that cube admin account. Again, the cube admin account is created at the end of the install. You have your password, which is created, uh, which is identified to you. And then finally, you have this nifty little uh, command you can run, which would export this cube config file that you see here in my install directory and allow you to log in as system admin. So if I wanted to run that, that will allow me to log in as system admin. So then I can just go in and do OC login system admin with my URL. Um, so again, that is uh, how you install OpenShift from the command line uh, using the IPI method for Google Cloud Platform. Now I'm just going to go over how to destroy. So let me exit out of that. And then to destroy it, I'm going to navigate to the location of my uh, OpenShift installer file. So that would be under my desktop temp new OCP. 
And as you can see in here, this is OpenShift install and the README. So I'm just going to run dot slash OpenShift install destroy cluster. You do have to specify a directory because I am running it locally. Again, if you move the OpenShift install binary to your path variable, you won't have to do this. So I'm going to specify my directory here, which I will get. And again, that's the GCP install directory. And that's why it's so important to keep those files that the installer creates. That's how you go in and can destroy the cluster. And then for uh, normal use, you can just hit enter here and run it. I do like to set the log level to debug um, for GCP as it, it allows me to see what it's trying to destroy. So to do that, you would just do hyphen hyphen log hyphen level equals debug. And so you get a lot more information, but it's easy to figure out if there's any issues or uh, errors while the, uh, the destruction is completing. So again, thank you for watching. That's how you install OpenShift Container Platform on Google Cloud Platform utilizing our IPI installer. Hope you found this video to be interesting, and please check out my other videos as well as view the blog that goes over the installation procedure for this. Thank you.